this morning on CBS 2 News, a former Caldwell police officer facing new charges as federal officials investigate the department. The latest on a potential second indictment on the way. Plus, protecting our kids. The training school resource officers are practicing to prepare for the worst. And later, crews having a tough time fighting some of our state's biggest fires. The obstacles making the flames hard to put out. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Thursday, August 11th, 2022. It's very calm out there this morning. And if you do get a chance stepping out the door, you need to take a look at that moon this morning. Again, we're looking at full moon tomorrow, but it is shining bright out there this morning. Hopefully a look at what's to come later on today. Brighter skies on the way. Vasily Varlamos joins us with the first look at your forecast. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, brighter skies are on the way. A little bit of a mild morning this morning. 71 degrees right now in Mountain Home. Over in Boise, 73 degrees this morning and 74 degrees over in Caldwell. Nampa right now is at 71 degrees. And then up in the mountains, 57 degrees right now in McCall and 59 degrees in Sun Valley. Futurecast showing us pretty clear morning this morning, but those clouds should roll in by this evening. We may even see a few spot showers here in the Treasure Valley as you can can see at four o'clock tonight, one over in the Ontario area, as well as one just west of Boise. We should see that flow through Boise this Thursday evening and then Friday mornings looking relatively clear as well as into the evening Friday looking relatively clear as well. A few spot showers over in the mountain home area, but again, very clear in the Boise area. 96 degrees expected here in Boise, 96 in Emmett and 95 degrees over in Ontario, 93 degrees expected in Caldwell and then up in the mountains, 86 degrees in McCall, 79 degrees expected in Stanley today and 91 degrees expected in Idaho City. Not a bad start to our Thursday. Thank you so much, Vasily. It is 502 CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We do bring you team traffic all morning long. It is looking good out there as you are heading out the door this morning, though there is a traffic collision at I-84 westbound. That's milepost 36 out in Nampa. Again, that happened just about 30 minutes ago, so you may be impacted by that. No um, attention to road closures or anything like that, but just want to keep that in mind. Again, that's I-84 westbound. That's milepost 36 out in Nampa. We do have a collision out there on the highway. But other than that, you are looking at some smooth sailing for this morning. As always, when you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we do begin this morning with new charges against former Caldwell Lieutenant Joseph Hoadley. Now this comes alongside the federal investigation into the Caldwell Police Department. Now right now, Hoadley is the only one charged. A federal indictment says he used unreasonable force during an arrest back in March of 2017, hurting the other person. He's now charged with tampering with documents and harassing a witness. Now, the new police chief says there wasn't the office wasn't fully cooperating with the FBI until he took over. Uh, I think people are just they want this matter to be closed and they want to move past this and uh, not distracted. And, and it's kind of noise at this point. And our officers need to get back to doing their job and protecting and serving this community that they swore to uphold and protect. Chief Ingram expects the FBI to charge one more person in this case. Now, Hoadley is scheduled for a trial set for September. In the meantime, an investigation into one former and five current officers for decertification by Idaho Peace Officer Standards and Training, or POST for short, that's been put on hold. Idaho Post, they can't do a parallel investigation if there's a pending criminal case or internal affairs investigation. Well, a dog owner in Caldwell being charged with animal cruelty. Now, you may recall a ring camera caught a dog owner punching their dog. Ugh. Well, the homeowner posted it online. The man in the video called animal control actually reporting himself. They went to his home and say the dog didn't seem hurt or suffering, but they did ticket him for not having a dog license and not vaccinating for rabies. Now police are taking the dog to West Valley Humane Society. We, we saw the video. It's extremely disturbing uh, to me, to my staff, to anyone that views this video, uh, including everyone in the community. And their, their, their concerns are valid. We hear them, we see them, we feel them. But we just have to 
uh, remain calm, let the investigators do their job, let the county prosecuting attorney do their job, work in partnership with them to bring justice. The owner has a court date coming up. He tells officers that he hit the dog in frustration over being late for work because the dog escaped the fence. Now, because of how publicized this is and the emotions it causes, his name is not being shared. Well, Boise Police School Resource Officers, they're training to keep your kids safe. They're conducting active shooter training with school resource officers preparing for a worst case scenario. Sure, we recognize that school resource officers will probably be on scene if something like this happens, they'll be on scene by themselves for a short period of time until other people can help. And we recognize that that's a, a really daunting situation where they may have to make decisions and go and try to engage that shooter by themselves. Resource officers are using this facility you see to practice quickly making their way through hallways and breaching doors. He's going to call it out, give that verbal command, which is set. There you go. So he says set. Set. The captain tells us that school resource officers, they still want more training to make their reaction second nature in the case the unthinkable ever happens. We'll take a look at this. An investigation underway this morning in Evansville, Indiana, after a sudden explosion. Now, four homes were destroyed. More than three dozen actually also damaged. Wow, it's an amazing video. At least three people did die in the blast. Now, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives is investigating to figure out just what happened. Well, turning to fire season here in Idaho, the Spring Creek boat launch on the Salmon River now reopen as crews continue to contain the moose fire. That fire is burning 17 miles north of Salmon up in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's now nearly 75,000 acres and 21% contained. Crews now expect full containment around September 15th. And several trails now closed in the area of the Indian Ridge Fire. Lightning sparked it near Idaho Selway Bitterroot Wilderness. It's about 30 miles southwest of Darby, Montana. It's burning 2,400 acres. Fire managers say they're trying to protect wilderness while also protecting their crews. They say rugged terrain in the area is making it a hard fight. And it is a similar situation for the Wood Tick Fire. Crews say it's unsafe to fight head on at this time. That fire sitting at nearly 5,500 acres, just 27 miles west of Chalice. Crews are working to protect several structures in the area. That does include the Silver Creek Historic Cabins. July had some of the hottest nights in history of the United States. Yeah, it brings a new meaning to hot summer nights. Now this July recorded an average temperature of about 63.57 degrees in lower 48 states of the US. That's according to the NOAA. Now that's the warmest of any month since official record data began back in the 1880s. Now this past July was also the third hottest July on record when daytime temperatures were taken into account. Well, the 52nd Bogus Basin Hill Climb, it's Saturday at 8 a.m. It's the third longest running climb in the country. It starts in the Highlands Village of Bogus Basin Road, ending at Pioneer Lodge. It's quite the climb. That climb expects close to 150 cyclists this year. The event's organizers, they hope to grow its popularity in the coming years. It's something that we have one foot in the past right now, but we also want to have one foot in the future and grow it and really make this a more community minded oriented event. We want just regular people who have looked at cyclists riding up and going, oh, I could never do that. We want to give them the opportunity to do that. This is just the second time the climb will reach all the way to Pioneer Lodge instead of Simplot Lodge, thanks to new road paving. Well, the Napa Festival of the Arts is set for this weekend. You don't want to miss it. The event will be at Lakeview Park. It starts Saturday, August 13th at 10 a.m. sharp. It'll go until 6 p.m. on Saturday and until 4 p.m. on Sunday. So mark your calendars. Of course, admission is free and open to anyone. For information, you can head to NampaParksAndRecreation.org. Love that. Uh, excited for all of the festivities, especially I know we have Art in the Park coming mm -hmm. up here too in Boise. So lots of opportunities to get out, enjoy some local artwork and spend some time in the community. Yeah, so there's going to be some great weather ahead as well for those opportunities to get out. High temperatures today, not only in Boise, but across the western United States. 89 degrees over in Salt Lake City. 
97 degrees expected in Denver and 96 degrees expected today over in Las Vegas. In Medford, they're looking at 93 degrees and up in Portland, they're looking at 86 degrees at 96 degrees expected here in Boise. Now over the next few days, we're going to see those clouds on their way out as well as some more sunshine this week. Mid to high 90 degree temperatures expected throughout the week as well as another dry weekend ahead. Future cast showing us we may see some clouds in the area today as well as a few spot thunderstorms here in the Treasure Valley. But after that, it's looking relatively clear heading into Friday morning and into Friday evening as well. There may be some clouds over in eastern Oregon on that Idaho Oregon border, but over in the Treasure Valley looking pretty clear heading into Saturday as well and into Saturday night. Now high temperatures for today 96 degrees expected here in Boise, 96 degrees expected in Emmett and 95 degrees expected over in Ontario. In Caldwell they're looking at 93 degrees today and down in Mountain Home they're looking at 95 degrees as their high today and then up in the mountains 86 degrees in McCall, 79 degrees in Stanley and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Over the next five days we're going to see temperatures stay pretty steady stagnant in the mid to high 90 range. Friday will be 98 degrees and then Saturday and Sunday will be 96 and Monday as well. Let you know about the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. The river behind you looking real inviting Vasily. Thank you. 511 on your Thursday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look outside this morning. It is looking good for the most part, though we do have a traffic collision. It's out in the Napa area. We do have that starting to clear, though, so some good news. It's I-84 westbound. That's milepost 36 out in Napa. So it's looking like it is the westbound lane heading into Northside Boulevard. So again, that is being cleaned up right now. Shouldn't slow you down by much, but want to keep you informed on what's happening on the roadways. That's what we want to do all morning. So when you get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, former President Trump under, under multiple investigations why he's being questioned under oath. And the countdown is on. The spirit of Boise taking flight. The festivities you don't want to miss. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. I wasn't here, so I don't know it. Let's see. The wealthier a household, the more likely they are to have a car with this feature. Huh, a stick shift? Interesting. All right, maybe some of those um, car collectors out there. Now for today's question of the day, a quarter of Americans say there is no way they could keep this up if they started doing it. All right, folks, what is the answer? CBS 2's adventure weather local forecast showing us the temperatures over in Weezer today. Mostly sunny skies with a high of 98 degrees. That'll drop to 71 degrees tonight and 99 degrees expected tomorrow over in Weezer. Now in Cascade, they're expecting 86 degree highs today. That'll drop to 51 degrees tonight and then they'll heat up tomorrow. 90 degrees expected in Cascade on Friday. Not too bad. Thank you, Vasily. It is 515. Former President Donald Trump questioned under oath yesterday. It was in connection with a civil investigation by the state of New York into alleged fraud by the Trump Organization. Now, as CBS News correspondent Trinity Chavez reports, he used his constitutional right to provide no answers. When Donald Trump was running for office in 2016, he had strong words for anyone taking the Fifth Amendment. You see, the mob takes the Fifth if you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? On Wednesday, the former president did just that, invoking his Fifth Amendment right time and again in an hours-long deposition with New York Attorney General Letitia James. Her civil investigation is looking into whether Trump's real estate businesses inflated the value of their assets, including his apartment in New York's Trump Tower. Trump has denied the allegations and on social media offered his reasons for not answering questions. When your family, your company, become the targets of an unfounded, politically motivated witch hunt, you have no choice. In civil cases, when you have potential criminal liability elsewhere, it's common and expected to have lawyers instruct their clients to take the Fifth Amendment, to not say anything that potentially could be used in a criminal case against them. The New York Attorney General's office said it will pursue the facts and the law wherever they may lead 
Our investigation continues. The deposition follows Monday's unprecedented FBI search of Trump's Florida home, which was unrelated to the New York investigation. Agents spent nine hours in the residence and searched an office for documents that could contain classified information. It's believed the documents were removed from the White House when Trump moved out in 2021. Trinity Chavez, CBS News, New York. Other investigations into former President Trump include a criminal inquiry by the Manhattan District Attorney, a Georgia probe into his alleged efforts to overturn the state's 2020 election results, and a federal grand jury hearing witness testimony about Trump's activities related to the 2020 vote. Well, in the meantime, Idaho Congressman Mike Simpson commenting on the FBI raid and Department of Justice's search of the former president's home. Now, in a statement he made online, Simpson called the decision quote, stunning, saying in part, quote, citizens of this country expect and deserve quality under law. Instead, President Biden's Justice Department continues to divide our nation through their hypocritical, hypocritical obsession with President Trump, end quote. Now, if you do want to see more of his statement, you can head on over to IdahoNews.com. Well, if you've never been to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, mark your calendars. The free event taking place Labor Day weekend at Ann Morrison Park. Spirit of Boise is super special because I think uh, it, it channels what makes Boise special and that's community. Mateo from 103.5 KISS FM, no stranger to this event. He's been talking about it for years on the radio. He says it's one of the must-see Boise events. These balloons up in the air bring the community together whether you're at the park or not. It's part of being a local if you want to get that stamp of approval. Yeah, you definitely want to be there in CBS2. We're home for exclusive Spirit of Boise coverage. We'll be live there each day starting on August 31st, bright and early with coverage on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. You can learn more about the Spirit of Boise, including the full schedule. Just visit IdahoNews.com. Oh, getting me giddy for the event as I'm seeing all those balloons out there. You know, if anybody wants to take a little early balloon ride, want to test it out, we are more than happy to do that <laughs> as well. So it's going to be a beautiful day ahead. I know that the moon is shining at least right now. More sunshine in store for today, but still a little bit of cloud cover going to be moving through. Does that mean any pop up showers? Because that was the main concern mm -hmm. for us yesterday. Yeah, we may be, see some pop up showers here in the Treasure Valley heading into this evening. I'll let you know about more about that here in a second. When you head out the door this morning, you'll see temperatures rise fairly quickly today by 9 a.m. That'll be 77 degrees. That'll jump up to 84 degrees by 11 a.m. By 3 p.m. it'll be 94 degrees leading to our high today of 96 degrees. Now future cast showing us a clear morning here in Boise, but those showers will make their way over through Wednesday night as they make their way over into the mountain area. We're seeing partly cloudy skies Thursday night, but we should clear up heading into Friday morning and clear skies should last throughout Friday as well heading into Saturday. Now high temperatures for today, 96 degrees expected in Boise, 96 expected in Emmett as well, and 95 degrees over in Ontario. Down Mountain Home, they're expecting 95 degrees as well, and 93 degrees today in Caldwell. And then up in the mountains, 86 degrees in McCall, 79 degrees in Stanley, and 91 degrees in Idaho City. For your extended forecast, temperatures are going to stay in that 96 to 98 degree range throughout the week this week. Friday will be 98 degrees and then 96 should stick throughout the weekend. Monday will be 96 as well and then heading into early next week 98 degrees and 97 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday respectively and then in the mountains we're looking at the same kind of thing where it's going to be 85 degrees on Thursday 88 degrees on Friday and then 87 degrees on Saturday. Thank you Vasily. It is 520 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there this morning. Uh, that crash we were talking about earlier, I-84 westbound out by Northside Boulevard in Nampa. That has been cleared, so it's looking like everything has cleared up. If you are heading in that direction, just want to keep you informed. Everything else, though, looking good. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, concerns over the upcoming school year, why health experts are worrying a surge in back to school sicknesses may be right around the corner. Plus, have you ever heard of kidney stone season? Why experts say rising temperatures are increasing the risk.
Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 524. Many students going back to school in the coming weeks. Now some school leaders are worried that COVID cases could climb once again. Now one physician told Sinclair's national desk that the best thing parents can do to protect their children is making sure that they're vaccinated. Make sure your children are up to date on all of their pediatric vaccines, not just COVID. We've got so many other illnesses emerging. What we want to do is protect and then also prevent. Aragona says parents should communicate with school leaders about plans to stop the spread of coronavirus. She also says children should stay home if they're experiencing any symptoms during the school year. Well, more than a half million people, they visit the emergency room each year because of painful kidney stones. Doctors say summer is kidney stone season with rising temperatures increasing the risk of the common problem. Michael George has more. Tawana Atkinson makes sure to drink plenty of water, especially on these hot summer days. Two gallons in the course of a day, and I try to get a little extra in there if I could. She's been upping her fluid intake after suffering a kidney stone last year. It feels rather painful. It feels in an achy type of, a achy type of pain in my lower back. It's estimated one in 10 people will have a kidney stone in their lives, and doctors see an increase in kidney stones in the steamy summer months because patients can get dehydrated, especially in warmer climates. Individuals who work outside and sweat more or spend more time doing outdoor activities, exercising more, they are more likely to have more concentrated urine and thereby develop more stones or develop stones for the first time or even increase the size of the stones that they may already have. Dr. Deepa Maliekel directs the Kidney Stones Prevention Center at Northwell Health. Prevention involves increasing hydration and that's going to decrease the precipitation of kidney stones, basically prevent those that are there from getting bigger. The other thing is trying to adopt a lower salt diet. Once you have had a kidney stone, there's a 50% chance of developing another one within the next five years. Tawana needed surgery for her kidney stone, but another was diagnosed a few months ago. They are watching it very carefully. She's also eating more vegetables and getting more physical activity to try and reduce her risk. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Some medical conditions, they can also increase the risk of kidney stones, such as obesity, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, an explosion shocking a neighborhood out in Indiana. The investigation into the blast that destroyed four homes. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After all your favorites, you can join Brent Hunsaker, Janae Ryan, and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question, a quarter of Americans say there's no way they could keep this up if they started doing it. All right, thinking caps on, what is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, a former Caldwell police officer facing new charges as federal officials investigate the department. The latest on a potential second indictment on the way. Plus, protecting your kids. The training school resource officers are practicing to prepare for the worst. Plus, crews having a tough time fighting some of our state's biggest wildfires. The obstacles making the flames hard to put out. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning to everybody on this Thursday. Here's a look at beautiful downtown Boise. About 73 degrees right now with a 9 mile an hour wind just going southeast. So it still feels like 73. Beautiful morning, maybe a little bit humid out there, but again, just gorgeous conditions out there in downtown Boise. Now, 
Today we are also going to see some gorgeous conditions. We may see some thunderstorms, however, heading into Thursday evening. As you can see here, both in Ontario as well as in the Boise area, we may see some showers in, in our neck of the woods. But heading into Friday, it should clear up just a little bit. Heading into Friday morning as well as Friday evening, they may see some clouds midday on Friday in the Ontario area. But looking pretty clear throughout the Treasure Valley heading into Saturday as well. High temperatures for today. 96 degrees in Boise, 96 degrees in Emmett, and 95 degrees over in Eastern Oregon in Ontario. 93 degrees expected in Caldwell and up in the mountains, 86 degrees expected in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. It is 531 on your Thursday. A great day ahead. CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything looking good. Hey, no reports of anything slowing you down. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And we begin this morning with new charges against former Caldwell Lieutenant Joseph Hoadley. Now this comes alongside the federal investigation into the Caldwell Police Department. Now right now, Hoadley is the only one charged. A federal indictment says he used unreasonable force during an arrest back in March of 2017, hurting the person. He's now charged with tampering with documents and harassing a witness. The new police chief there says the office wasn't fully cooperating with the FBI until he took over. Uh, I think people are just, they want this matter to be closed and they want to move past this and uh, not distracted and, and it's kind of noise at this point and our officers need to get back to doing their job and protecting and serving this community that they swore to uphold and protect. Chief Ingram expects the FBI to charge one more person. Now, Hoadley is scheduled for a trial in September. In the meantime, an investigation into one former and five current officers for decertification by the Idaho Peace Officer Standards and Training, or POST for short, that's been put on hold. Now, Idaho POST cannot do a parallel investigation if there's a pending criminal case or an internal affairs investigation. Well, a dog owner in Caldwell being charged with animal cruelty. Now, you may recall a ring camera caught a dog owner punching his dog. Now the homeowner posted it online. The man in the video actually called animal control reporting himself. Now they went to his home. They say the dog didn't seem hurt or suffering, but they are ticketing him for not having a dog license and not vaccinating for rabies. Now police are taking the dog to West Valley Humane Society. We, we saw the video. It's extremely disturbing uh, to me, to my staff, to anyone that views this video. Uh, including everyone in the community, and their, their, their concerns are valid. We hear them, we see them, we feel them, but we just have to uh, remain calm, let the investigators do their job, let the county prosecuting attorney do their job, work in partnership with them to bring justice. The owner does have a court date coming up. He tells officers he hit the dog in frustration over being late for work because the dog escaped his fence. Now, because of how publicized this is and the emotion it causes, his name isn't being shared. Well, Boise Police School Resource Officers, they're training to keep your kids safe. They're conducting active shooter training with school resource officers, preparing for a worst case scenario. Sure, we recognize that school resource officers will probably be on scene. If something like this happens, they'll be on scene by themselves for a short period of time until other people can help. And we recognize that that's a really daunting situation where they may have to make decisions and go and try to engage that shooter by themselves. Resource officers are using this facility you see to make to practice quickly making their way through hallways and even breaching doors. He's going to call it out, give that verbal command, which is set. There you go. So he says set. I did. Set. The captain says school resource officers, they still want more training to make their reactions second nature in case the unthinkable ever happens. Well, switching gears, take a look at this. An investigation, it's underway in Evansville, Indiana this morning after a sudden explosion. Now, four homes were destroyed, three more, as well as a dozen other damaged. At least three people did die in the blast. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives they're investigating to figure out what caused the blast. Turning this morning to fire season here in Idaho, the Spring Creek boat launch on the Salmon River now reopened as crews are continuing to try to contain the moose fire. 
Now that fire is burning about 17 miles north of Salmon, up in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's now nearly 75,000 acres and nearly 21% contained. Now crews expect full containment, they say, around September 15th. And several trails are now closed in the area of the Indian Ridge Fire. Now lightning sparked this one near Idaho Selway Bitterroot Wilderness. It's about 30 miles southwest of Darby, Montana. This one's burning 2,400 acres th at this time. Fire managers say they're trying to protect wilderness while also protecting their crews, but they say rugged terrain in the area is making it a hard fight. And it's a similar situation for the wood tick fire. Now crews say it's unsafe to fight head on. This fire is nearly 5,500 acres, burning just 27 miles west of the town of Chalice. Now crews are working to protect several structures in the area, including the Silver Creek Historic Cabins. Well, July had some of the hottest nights in the history of the United States, bringing a new meaning to hot summer nights. Now this July recorded an average temperature of about 63.57 degrees in the lower 48 states of the U.S. Now that's the warmest of any month since official record keeping began back in 1880. This past July was also the third hottest July on record when daytime temperatures were taken into account. Community Matters here at CBS 2 in the 52nd Bogus Basin Hill Climb. It's Saturday at 8 a.m. Mark your calendars. It's the third longest running hill climb in the country. It starts at Highlands Village on Bogus Basin Road and it ends at Pioneer Lodge. Now the climb expects close to 150 cyclists this year and event organizers, they hope to grow its popularity in the coming years. It's something that we have one foot in the past right now, but we also want to have one foot in the future and grow it and really make this a more community minded oriented event. We want just regular people who have looked at cyclists riding up and gone, oh, I could never do that. We want to give them the opportunity to do that. Yeah, don't let it scare you. Now, this is the second time the climb will reach all the way to Pioneer Lodge instead of Simplot Lodge. That's all thanks to new road paving. And the Napa Festival of Art set for this weekend. Now the event is at Lakeview Park. It starts on Saturday, August 13th at 10 a.m. It goes all the way through 6 p.m. on Saturday and until 4 p.m. on Sunday. Keep that in mind. Of course, admission is free. Everyone is welcome. For more information, you can head to NapaParksAndRecreation.org. Oh, so much fun. Excited for some of the art festivals going on, some fun community art. You know, we have that obviously every single Saturday out at um, down at the market downtown. Mm -hmm. But it's fun when you really expand it and get to see people from oh, yeah. all over the Treasure Valley come on out. So it's going to be a fun time. How's the weather looking, though, for all of our folks wanting to head out? Yeah, weather's looking great. We're going to see sunshine throughout the week as well as mid to high 90 degree highs. I'll let you know a little bit more about that here in a second. 96 degrees expected here in Boise today over in Salt Lake City. They're looking at about 89 degrees today and Denver getting hit with a little bit of a heat wave as well as most of the Midwest. 97 degrees expected there. 96 degrees expected in Las Vegas and then up in Portland, 86 degrees expected is the high there. But as I said, 96 degrees expected here in Boise. Now, clouds are on their way out over the next few days. We're going to see more sunshine this week as well as those mid to high 90 degree or mid to high 90 degree high temperatures and another dry weekend expected expected in our near future. Futurecast showing us the cloud cover over the next few days and Thursday morning is looking relatively clear, but Thursday night we may see a few showers in the early evening. Those will be in the Boise area as well as on the Oregon Idaho border and then heading into Friday. It should be relatively clear throughout the weekend. We may see a few clouds on the Oregon Idaho border Friday night, but Saturday looking very clear here in the Treasure Valley. High temperatures for today 96 in Boise, 96 in Emmett and 95 degrees over in Ontario, 95 expected in Mountain Home today as well, 93 over in Caldwell and then up in the mountains, 86 in McCall and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Now for your extended forecast, we're looking in the mid to high 90s throughout the next five days, 96 on Thursday, 98 on Friday and then 96 Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'll let you know about the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Yeah, thank you, Vasily. Looking forward to it. It is 540 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything looking good out there this morning. Still pretty quiet considering the time, but everything 
looking good this morning. No reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is a quarter of Americans say there's no way they could keep this up if they started doing it. All right, about 25%. What is it, folks? Vasily, what are we thinking? I'm thinking maybe like, I was thinking like maybe <laughs> running. I don't know. Like I'm not the biggest fan of running, but like long distance running. Like you try to keep that. You could do it maybe one day, but like oh, try yeah. to do it three, four days in a row. It really takes a toll. So no. that's my first guess. I don't know. Hard to keep the momentum going. I think that's a great yeah. guess. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with Vasily on that one. I would say any type of running, physical mm -hmm. exercise outside. Lisa, also with us. Oh my gosh, this is great. Yeah, she says exercise or going to the gym. Yeah, 24% of us. It's hard to keep those kind yeah, of habits. What's... Hard to keep the habits for sure. Yeah, James says eating healthy. Oh, I get that too. Say all the things we need to be working on, folks. It's okay though, one day at a time. Jeff says working the graveyard shift. Yeah, Oof, yeah it's a difficult it's one. Mm -hmm. I, I commend everyone out there. I mean, we're up at 2 a.m., but some people up at midnight. Exactly. Say, our producer is up at all hours helping create this show, so <laughs> shout out to him. But yeah, all right, guys. Well, if you don't think any of these answers work, you still have an hour and 15 minutes to, of course, guess. You can guess on our Facebook page or our Twitter. And of course, we'll read some more answers coming up and reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. All right, still to come on CBS 2 News, economists say they're a bit op more optimistic. Like to see that, the positive signs that seem to point to inflation finally slowing down. CBS 2's Adventure Weather Local Forecast showing us the temperatures over in Weezer today. Mostly sunny day, 98 degrees expected as the high. That'll drop to 71 degrees tonight. And then it'll jump one degree up tomorrow, 99 degrees expected in Weezer on Friday. And then in Cascade, 86 degrees expected as the high today. That'll drop to 51 degrees tonight. And they'll jump up a few degrees as well, 90 degrees expected on Friday in Cascade tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. Well, prices on just about everything still sitting high, but some economists say they're a bit more hopeful when at least it comes to inflation. Now, Amy Kiley reports on the new numbers behind that cautious optimism. It feels like, uh, you know, uh, we're going to get some better news here. Some economists are starting to sound hopeful about prices in the U.S. going down. Even though we got this cooling, ongoing pressures on food prices and gasoline prices, those could come back at any time. Make that cautiously hopeful. It's not going to be a straight line, I'm sure. There's going to be ups and downs and all around and there's going to be disappointments. But I do think we're going to feel a lot better about inflation, you know, a year from now. New data show the consumer price index didn't change between June and July. Gas prices continue dropping. A gallon of regular costs 468 about a month ago. Now it's about four bucks. A vice president at Gas Buddy says that trend could continue, but it's hurricane season, so don't get too excited. If we see any major storm, uh, I would say a category three or stronger, targeting an area between New Orleans and Houston. Buckle up. The oil prices are really key. Uh, you know, it shows up mostly, most quickly with regard to gas prices, but it's going to show up in food prices. Economists say cheaper diesel means cheaper shipping and eventually cheaper food. But the U.S. isn't there yet. Food prices went up between June and July, and overall prices are still much higher than a year ago, leaving some Americans struggling to buy necessities. Our goal, and we think it is absolutely possible, is to lower prices and get to a point of more steady, stable growth. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. According to AAA, the national average cost for a gallon of gas, it's fallen below $4 for the first time in months. It's sitting at about $3.99, so just a cent shy. Here in Idaho, the average around $4.74 a gallon, still well above that national average. Well, air travelers finally getting some relief on the cost of flying, but it's not much compared to last year. Now, the government's consumer prices report says the average fare fell nearly 8% in July to just $311, but that is still nearly 28% higher than a year ago. Strong demand coupled with fewer flights helps spark the rise. Airlines, they also blame high fuel prices. 
Well, egg and poultry prices may take longer to trend downward. That's because of a new outbreak. Now more bird flu cases are being reported out here in the West. Now it's enough of a concern that many are changing the way they do business to protect the birds. If we get an outbreak, it could hit us very, very hard, very fast. In the U.S., the avian flu outbreak killed more than 30 million commercial and wild birds, according to Information Resources Incorporated. Now that has contributed to a 47% increase in the price of eggs at grocery stores in July compared to just a year ago. Now here in Idaho, the last time a flock had a detected case of avian flu, that was back on May 24th of this year. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're working to make this sure every student this school year is has a bright one. We want to supply them with everything they need to learn. But it is running out of time. That drive, it ends tomorrow. So make sure to get your donations in. We want to help as many people as possible. Now tomorrow, we'll be at CapEd Credit Union at North Marketplace Boulevard out in Nampa. We hope to fill a school bus to the brim with supplies for local kids. Now all donations will be given to the Salvation Army and put into backpacks given right back to Treasure Valley Kids. Now right now, what we need the most is glue, spiral notebooks, colored pencils, red pens, and scissors. Again, you can see that on your screen. You can take your donation to any CapEd Credit Union location. You can also donate money through a link. It's on IdahoNews.com if that's a little easier. It'll be used to buy supplies that didn't get donated. Now you can find a link for that. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com. Yeah, a little bit of helpful stuff. Because I know when I at least go to the store, you know you want to buy back to school mm -hmm. supplies. I, you know, we don't have kids. So you don't really sometimes know what the what the hard hit things that they need. But I know that scissors, definitely one of them, red pens, all of that glue. So again, whatever you can do, we are so thankful for it. And again, want to help out those kids get getting ready for school. Crazy to think it's already August yeah. 11th. We're in the dog days of summer. And these temperatures, Vasily, I'm so thankful we're not in the triple digits, mm -hmm. keeping it in the 90s, but some pop-up showers possible yeah. later today. Sticking in the 90s for the next week for sure. We're going to see a few spot showers. I'll show you them here in just a second. But when you're heading out the door this morning, you'll see temperatures rise fairly quickly today with a high of 96 degrees. By 9 a.m., it'll be 77 degrees. That'll jump up to 84 degrees by 11 a.m. And by 3 p.m., it'll be 94, leading to our high today. Now, Futurecast shown us a very clear morning here this Thursday, but clouds will start to roll in by this afternoon. And this evening, we may see a few spot thunderstorms here, both in Boise as well as over in eastern Oregon in Ontario. Now, we're looking fairly clear as well on Friday. There's some clouds Friday afternoon. In the, in the Ontario area, but here in Boise, looking relatively clear heading into the weekend. Now, high temperatures for today, 96 degrees in Boise, 96 in Emmett as well, and 95 degrees in Ontario, 95 expected in, on, in Mountain Home, and then up in the mountains, McCall's looking at 86 degrees today, 79 degrees in Stanley, and 91 degrees in Idaho City. For your extended forecast, we're looking at temperatures sitting in the 96 to 98 degree range throughout the week, 98 on Friday and then 96 throughout the weekend into Monday as well and then 98 on Tuesday and 97 on Wednesday and heading into the mountains partly cloudy day today but Friday will be 88 degrees 87 on Saturday and 88 on Sunday they're sitting at the high 80s mark throughout the rest of the week over in the mountains not too bad thank you Vasily it is 551 CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long Seeing a few more headlights out there this morning, but no reports of anything that's going to stop you out on the roads this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News, some scary moments at a Little League game leads into a lesson in sportsmanship. The heartwarming story you don't want to miss. This is CBS 2 News This Morning.
It's 554. The Boise Hawks getting ready for their final game in Missoula. Now last night the Hawks did fall to the Paddleheads 14 to 2. That's the second loss for this series. Now they do have one more game there tonight. Then the Paddleheads, they follow the Hawks here for three home games. Well, a scary moment during a Little League tournament in Waco, Texas on Tuesday it turned out to be an inspiring display of sportsmanship. Now, it's a story that went viral early this week, and now CBS 2's Trinity Chavez is sharing the uplifting story. Oh, look out. This heart-stopping moment at a Little League baseball playoff game quickly turned into a heartwarming moment display of sportsmanship. My name is Caden Shelton, and they call me Bubs. It all started when a fastball from Texas East pitcher Caden Shelton hit the batter, Oklahoma's Isaiah Jarvis, in the side of the head. Gosh. Jarvis immediately oh dropped to the ground in pain, gripping his head. The crowd stunned. I was really scared that he was going to, like, be injured and go to the ER and stuff. But to the relief of players and fans, he soon recovered. Then something remarkable happened. Jarvis marched over to Shelton, who was visibly upset, and embraced him with a hug, letting him know he was all right. So this is really cool because as a pitcher, Bubs looks shaken up right now. I was crying, and I, like, I could hardly breathe, honestly, at that point. And uh, he came over and he hugged me, and he told me I got this. The touching moment between opponents applauded in the ballpark and online. That's what Little League Baseball is all about. It's about the community and the friendships you can make. A friendship the two boys insist will last long after playing baseball. Trinity Chavez, CBS News, New York. Now the game was the Little League Southwest Regional Championship with the winner, which was Texas East advancing to the Little League World Series in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Now Jarvis says he told his new friend Caden to go and win it all. Love that. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, an explosion shocks a neighborhood in Indiana. The investigation into the blast that destroyed four homes. Plus, former President Trump under multiple investigations, why he's being questioned under oath. You're watching CBS News this morning. We have your latest headlines at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, a former Caldwell police officer facing new charges as federal officials investigate the department. The latest on the potential second indictment on the way. Plus, protecting your kids. The training school resource officers are practicing, preparing for the worst. And later, crews having a tough time fighting some of our state's biggest wildfires. The obstacles making the flames hard to put out. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Thursday, August 11th, 2022. Seeing a little bit of first light out beneath those clouds. And if you do, again, are dodging clouds this morning, it's a beautiful view of the moon, obviously setting right now. But we do have a full moon tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. Brighter days are on the way. More sunshine as well. Vasily Varlamos joins us for a first look at your forecast. And Vasily, what can we expect heading out the door this morning? Uh, we can expect mild temperatures this morning. We're sitting at the low 70s here in Boise, 73 degrees right now, 70 degrees in Mountain Home as well, and 70 degrees over in Caldwell. In Nampa, they're at 71 degrees right now, and then up in the mountains, 56 degrees right now in McCall, and this morning, 59 degrees in Sun Valley. Future cast showing us a relatively clear morning here in Boise, but we may see some storms on the way this afternoon into this evening as well.
Well, as you can see, a storm just over Boise around 5 o'clock tonight, and that will continue on into this evening. But once the morning comes along, Friday morning looking very, very clear, as well as Friday evening, there may be a few clouds around noon on Friday in the Ontario area, but looking relatively clear heading into the weekend. Now, high temperatures for today, 96 degrees here in Boise, 96 degrees in Emmett as well, and 96 over in Ontario, down in Mountain Home, 95 degrees expected as the high there and 94 degrees over in Caldwell. Up in the mountains, 86 degrees expected in McCall today, 79 degrees in Stanley and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Now, thank you, Vasily. Expecting a nice day ahead. It is 602 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. No reports of anything this morning to slow you down. Looking good out there. It's what we'd like to see. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And we begin this morning with new charges against former Caldwell Lieutenant Joseph Hoadley. This comes alongside the federal investigation into the Caldwell Police Department. Now, right now, Hoadley's the only one that's currently charged. A federal indictment says that he used unreasonable force during an arrest back in March of 2017 hurting the person. He's now charged with tampering with documents and harassing that witness. The new police chief there says the office wasn't fully cooperating with the FBI until he took over. Uh, I think people are just they want this matter to be closed and they want to move past this and uh, not distracted and, and it's kind of noise at this point and our officers need to get back to doing their job and protecting and serving this community that they swore to uphold and protect. Chief Ingram does expect the FBI to charge one more person in this case. Now, Hoadley is scheduled for a trial in September. In the meantime, an investigation into one former and five current officers for decertification by Idaho Peace Officer Standards and Training, or POST for short, that's been put on hold. Now, Idaho POST, they can't do a parallel investigation if there's a pending criminal case or an internal affairs investigation. Well, a dog owner in Caldwell being charged with animal cruelty. You may recall a ring camera caught a dog owner punching their dog. The homeowner posted it online. The man in the video called animal control, actually reporting himself. They went to his home. They say the dog didn't seem hurt or suffering, but they did ticket him for not having a dog license or vaccinating his dog for rabies. Police are taking the dog to West Valley Humane Society. We, we saw the video. It's extremely disturbing uh, to me, to my staff, to anyone that views this video, uh, including everyone in the community. And their, their, their concerns are valid. We hear them, we see them, we feel them. But we just have to uh, remain calm, let the investigators do their job, let the county prosecuting attorney do their job, work in partnership with them to bring justice. The owner has a court date coming up. He tells officers that he hit the dog in frustration over being late for work because the dog escaped the fence. Now, because of how publicized this is and the emotion it causes, his name is not being shared. Boise Police School Resource Officers, they're training to keep your kids safe. They're conducting active trainer shooting with the school resource officers, preparing for a worst case scenario. Sure, we recognize that school resource officers will probably be on scene if something like this happens, they'll be on scene by themselves for a short period of time until other people can help. And we recognize that that's a, a really daunting situation where they may have to make decisions and go and try to engage that shooter by themselves. Resource officers are using this facility to practice making their way through halls and breaching doors. He's going to call it out, give that verbal command, which is set. set. There you go. So he says set. I did. Set. The captain says school resource officers, they still want more training in order to make their reaction second nature in case the unthinkable ever happens. We'll take a look at this. An investigation is underway in Evansville, Indiana this morning after a sudden explosion. Now four homes were destroyed. Three more or more than three dozen, pardon me, were at least damaged. Look at that blast. At least three people did die. Now, the ATF is investigating to figure out just what caused that blast. Turning to fire season here in Idaho, the Spring Creek boat launch on the Salmon River now reopened as crews are continuing to contain the moose fire. 
Now that fire is burning about 17 miles north of the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's now nearly 75,000 acres, sitting at 21% containment. Crews, they now expect full containment around September 15th. And several trails are now closed in the area of the Indian Ridge Fire. Lightning sparked this one near the Idaho Selway Bitterroot Wilderness. It's about 30 miles southwest of Darby, Montana. It's burning 2,400 acres this morning. Fire managers say they're trying to protect wilderness while also protecting crews. But the rugged terrain in the area makes it a hard fight. And it is a similar situation for the wood tick fire. Crews say it's unsafe to fight head on at this time. That fire is now nearly 5,500 acres, burning just 27 miles west of the town of Chalice. Crews, they're working to protect several structures in the area. That does include the Silver Creek Historic Cabins. Well, July had some of the hottest nights in the history of the U.S., bringing a new meaning to hot summer nights. Now, this July recorded an average temperature of 63.57 degrees in the lower 48 states of the U.S. Now, that's the warmest of any month since official record keeping of that data began back in 1880. This past July was also the third hottest July on record when daytime temperatures were also taken into account. Well, the 52nd Bogus Basin Hill Climb, it's Saturday at 8 a.m. Mark your calendars. It's the third longest running hill climb in the country. It starts at Highlands Village on Bogus Basin Road and ends all the way up at Pioneer Lodge. Now, the climb expecting close to about 150 cyclists this year. Event organizers, they're hoping to grow popularity in the coming years. It's something that we have one foot in the past right now, but we also want to have one foot in the future and grow it and really make this a more community minded oriented event. We want just regular people who have looked at cyclists riding up and gone, oh, I could never do that. We want to give them the opportunity to do that. Yeah, so don't be afraid. It's the second time the climb will reach all the way to Pioneer Lodge instead of Simplot Lodge. That's all thanks to new road paving. And this weekend, the Napa Festival of Arts is set. The event is at Lakeview Park. It starts Saturday, August 13th at 10 a.m. It'll go until 6 o'clock on Saturday and until 4 p.m. on Sunday. Of course, admissions, it's free to anyone. For more information, you can head to the Napa Parks and Recreation.org. Sounds like a great time. Yeah, lots of fun things coming up. I mean, we're getting definitely into kind of the latter half of August, which is crazy to think about mm -hmm. that we're already there. But lots of events going on. Of course, you want to get outside and enjoy it. So how is our weather looking for all those people that want to get out and still, you know, get the most out of their August? Well, the weather's <laughs> looking great if you want to head outdoors. High temperatures today and high temperatures across the western United States as well here in Boise. 96 degrees expected as the high today over in Salt Lake City, 89. 9 degrees expected as the high there in Oregon, 93 degrees expected in Southern Oregon over in Medford and in Northern Oregon, 87 degrees expected in Portland and then in Las Vegas, 97 degrees expected as the high there. But here in Boise, we're seeing high temperatures and those clouds are finally on their way out. We're going to see more sunshine this week with mid to high 90 degree temperatures throughout the week as well. And we're also looking forward to another dry weekend here in the Treasure Valley. That rain is on its way out as well. We're looking at a clear morning here in Boise, but we may see some rain come into the area today. Just a few spot showers Thursday night, but Friday looking very, very clear and we're going to stay clear throughout the weekend as well. There may be some clouds over in the Oregon Idaho border on Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, but heading into Saturday, very, very clear here in Boise. 96 expected as the high here in Boise, 96 in Emmett and Ontario as well. Over in Mountain Home, they're looking at 95 degrees as their high and in Caldwell, 94 degrees expected there. And then up in the mountains, 86 degrees in McCall and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Now for the five day forecast, 96 degrees expected today. That'll jump up to 98 degrees on Friday. And then we should see 96 for the rest of the week weekend heading into early next week. I'll let you know about the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Like and what I see. Thank you, Basili. It is 610 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for a first look out there on the roadways. Good morning, Ron. How you doing? Good morning. Welcome back, Sarah. And uh, doing great, as is the drive. Very quiet start. Well, a little moderate volume, 84 here and there, but uh, not anything big going.
Let's talk some closures real quick. Uh, Pine remains closed either side of Eagle Road. No getting through on Pine. Continued work there. And uh, Overland this week, some repair work on uh, Sewer Main or Sewer Line. That's between 5 Mile and Maple Grove. No through traffic again this morning on Overland. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. Those closures important to keep in mind. So when you do get in the car, turn on KBOI to News, or News Talk KBOI at 6.70 a.m. or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, former President Trump under multiple investigations. Why he's being questioned under oath. And the countdown is on. The spirit of Boise taking flight. The festivities you don't want to miss. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Now, the wealthier a household, the more likely they are to have a car with this feature. The answer, not what you'd expect. It's a stick shift. Yeah, I like to think it's a bunch of people with muscle cars possibly fixing up some nice old vehicles. Now for today's question, a quarter of Americans say there's no way they could keep this up if they started doing it. About 25%. All right, folks, thinking caps on. What is it? CBS 2's Adventure Weather Local Forecast showing us the forecast over in Weezer today. 98 degrees expected there, mostly sunny skies as well. That'll cool down to 71 degrees tonight, and they'll jump up one degree tomorrow. 99 degrees expected in Weezer on Friday. And over in Cascade, 86 degrees expected as the high there. That'll drop to 51 degrees tonight, and they'll heat up all the way to 90 degrees tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. It is 6:15. Former President Donald Trump questioned under oath yesterday. Now it was in connection with a civil investigation by the state of New York into alleged fraud by the Trump Organization. Now as CBS News correspondent Trinity Chavez reports, he used his constitutional right to provide no answers. When Donald Trump was running for office in 2016, he had strong words for anyone taking the Fifth Amendment. You see, the mob takes the Fifth. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? On Wednesday, the former president did just that, invoking his Fifth Amendment right time and again in an hours-long deposition with New York Attorney General Letitia James. Her civil investigation is looking into whether Trump's real estate businesses inflated the value of their assets, including his apartment in New York's Trump Tower. Trump has denied the allegations and on social media offered his reasons for not answering questions. When your family, your company, become the target of an unfounded, politically motivated witch hunt, you have no choice. In civil cases, when you have potential criminal liability elsewhere, it's common and expected to have lawyers instruct their clients to take the Fifth Amendment, to not say anything that potentially could be used in a criminal case against them. The New York Attorney General's office said it will pursue the facts and the law wherever they may lead. Our investigation continues. The deposition follows Monday's unprecedented FBI search of Trump's Florida home, which was unrelated to the New York investigation. Agents spent nine hours in the residence and searched an office for documents that could contain classified information. It's believed the documents were removed from the White House when Trump moved out in 2021. Trinity Chavez, CBS News, New York. Idaho Congressman Mike Simpson is commenting on the FBI and Department of Justice's search of the former president's home. Now, in a statement made online, Simpson called the decision, quote, stunning, saying in part that citizens of this country expect and deserve quality under the law. Instead, he says President Biden's Justice Department continues to divide our nation through their hypocritical obsession with President Trump. That's the end quote. Now, if you want to see more of this statement, you can head to IdahoNews.com. Well, switching gears, if you've never been to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, you want to mark your calendars. The free event taking place on Labor Day weekend at Ann Morrison Park. Spirit of Boise is super special because I think uh, it, it channels what makes Boise special, and that's community. That's Mateo from 103.5 KISS FM. He's no stranger to the event. He's been talking about it on the radio for years. He says it's one of the must-see Boise events. These balloons up in the air bring the community together, whether you're at the park or not. It's part of being a local if you want to get that stamp of approval. And CBS2 is your home for exclusive Spirit of Boise coverage. We'll be live there each day starting on August 31st, bright and early, with coverage on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. 
You can learn more about the spirit of Boise. Just visit again idahonews.com. You can find all your information there for the day of. It's going to be beautiful, excited for not only, of course, the balloons, but the sunrise, mm -hmm. just the entire event, seeing the community come together in this way. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it sounds like a blast. Still a few weeks away, so we can't really forecast for it yet, mm -hmm. but everything at least up to that point right now looking really good. Yeah, looking great this week. We're looking at sunny skies, which would be perfect conditions for the spirit of Boise. Mm -hmm. Sunny skies as well as just awesome conditions here, dry conditions, beautiful beautiful conditions here in Boise. When you're heading out the door this morning, you'll see temperatures rise fairly quickly today. By 9 a.m. it'll be 77 degrees. That'll jump up to 85 degrees by 11 a.m. and then by 3 p.m. it'll be 94 degrees, leading to our high today of 96 degrees. Futurecast showing us a fairly clear morning on Thursday, but by the evening time we may see a few spot showers here in the area. They'll start moving through the Boise area by, by Thursday evening, but heading into Friday, looking relatively clear here in the Treasure Valley. There may be a few clouds Friday afternoon over in the Ontario area, but heading into Saturday, very clear and very very hot as well. 96 degrees here in Boise, 96 in Emmett and 96 in Ontario as well. 94 degrees expected in Caldwell and 95 degrees expected down in Mountain Home. Up in the mountains, 86 degrees expected in McCall and 91 degrees expected in Idaho City. For your seven day forecast, we're going to see temperatures range in the 96 to 98 degree range. 98 expected on Friday, 96 through the weekend as well as on Monday. And then on Tuesday, they'll jump up to 98 degrees and 97 degrees expected next Wednesday and in the mountains we're seeing a similar trend with today the most the only partly cloudy day the rest of the week should be sunny we're looking at upper 90 or upper 80 degree temperatures throughout the week and 90 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you Vasily it is 621 CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for a check of what's happening out on the roads. Good morning Ron. Well, good morning. It's uh, very quiet, doing okay. In general, a little moderate volume perhaps here and there on 84, but uh, no holdups really to speak of. No significant backing or anything like that. Good to go all the way around, away from the freeways. Unless you get into a detour, Pine remains closed either side of Eagle Road for some work going on there, both east and west of Eagle. And then uh, Overland closed this week. Repair work in that area between Five Mile and Maple Grove shut down. No getting through on Overland. From the uh, News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure to turn to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, concerns over the upcoming school year. Why health experts worry a surge in back to school sickness may be just around the corner. Plus, have you ever heard of kidney stone season? Why experts say rising temperatures are increasing the risk. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 624 on your Thursday. Many students going back to school in the coming weeks. Now, some school leaders are worried that coronavirus cases could once again climb. Now, one physician told Sinclair's national desk the best thing parents can do to protect their children is to make sure they're vaccinated. Make sure your children are up to date on all of their pediatric vaccines, not just COVID. We've got so many other illnesses emerging. What we want to do is protect and then also prevent. Aragona says parents should communicate with school leadership about plans to stop the spread of coronavirus. She also says children should stay home if they're experiencing any symptoms during the school year. Well, more than a half of a million people visit the emergency room each year due to painful kidney stones. Now, doctors say the summer is now kidney stone season. They say rising temperatures increase the risk of this common problem. Michael George has more. Tawana Atkinson makes sure to drink plenty of water, especially on these hot summer days. Two gallons in the course of a day, and I try to get a little extra in there if I could. She's been upping her fluid intake after suffering a kidney stone last year. It feels rather painful. It feels in an achy type of, uh, achy type of pain in my lower back. 
It's estimated one in 10 people will have a kidney stone in their lives. And doctors see an increase in kidney stones in the steamy summer months because patients can get dehydrated, especially in warmer climates. Individuals who work outside and sweat more or spend more time doing outdoor activities, exercising more, they are more likely to have more concentrated urine and thereby develop more stones or develop stones for the first time or even increase the size of the stones that they may already have. Dr. Deepa Molly Eckel directs the Kidney Stones Prevention Center at Northwell Health. Prevention involves increasing hydration and that's going to decrease the precipitation of kidney stones, basically prevent those that are there from getting bigger. The other thing is trying to adopt a lower salt diet. Once you have had a kidney stone, there's a 50% chance of developing another one within the next five years. Tawana needed surgery for her kidney stone, but another was diagnosed a few months ago. They are watching it very carefully. She's also eating more vegetables and getting more physical activity to try and reduce her risk. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Some good tips still to come on CBS 2 News. An explosion shocking a neighborhood in Indiana. The latest on the investigation. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, a former Caldwell police officer facing new charges as federal officials investigate the department. The latest on a potential second indictment on the way. Plus, protecting your kids. The training school resource officers are practicing to prepare for the worst case scenario. And later, crews having a tough time fighting some of our state's biggest wildfires. The obstacles making the flames hard to put out. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Hope everyone's having a great morning on this lovely Thursday here in Boise. Take a look at downtown Boise after the sunrise. A little bit of clouds in the sky, but just a gorgeous view here. 73 degrees right now with just a slight southerly wind, 3 miles an hour. Just gorgeous day here, and we're expecting a gorgeous day throughout the week as well. Today in Boise, we're looking pretty clear, but we may see some storms come through by Thursday night. As you can see, it just passed through Boise by 545, so it should pass through Boise around 4 to 5 p.m. And there also may be one in Ontario as well, just some rainfall here in the Treasure Valley. But after Thursday, looking very clear heading into Friday and into Friday evening as well. Friday afternoon, there may be some clouds over the Ontario area as well as that storm just heading to the Stanley area Friday night, but into Saturday looking very clear here in Boise. 96 degrees expected as the high in Boise today. 96 in Emmett and 96 in Ontario as well. 94 degrees expected in Caldwell today and 95 degrees expected in Mountain Home. And then up in the mountains, 86 degrees in McCall, 79 in Stanley and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Thank you, Vasily. It is 631 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything is looking good. You want to stay tuned because Ron O'Brien from the News Talk KBOI Center has an update as well on some of the closures happening this month. So that'll come up in the next 10 minutes. But as far as heading out this morning, looking good when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And we begin this morning with new charges against former Caldwell Lieutenant Joseph Hoadley. Now this does come alongside the federal investigation into the Caldwell Police Department. Now right now, Hoadley is the only one charged. A federal indictment says that he used unreasonable force during an arrest back in March of 2017, hurting the person. He's now charged with tampering with documents and harassing a witness. Now, the new police chief there says the office wasn't fully cooperating with the FBI until he took over. Uh, I think people are just, they want this matter to be closed and they want to move past this and uh, not distracted and, and it's kind of noise at this point and our officers need to get back to doing their job and protecting and serving this community that they swore to uphold and protect. Chief Ingram does expect the FBI to charge one more person in this case. Now, Hudley is scheduled for a trial in September. 
Meantime, an investigation into one former and five current officers for decertification by the Idaho Peace Officer Standards and Training, or POST for short, that's been put on hold. Now, Idaho POST cannot do a parallel investigation if there's a pending criminal case or an internal affairs investigation. A dog owner in Caldwell being charged with animal cruelty. You may recall that a ring camera caught a dog owner or an owner punching his dog. Now the homeowner posted it online and the man in the video called animal control reporting himself. They went to his home. They say the dog didn't seem hurt or suffering, but they are ticketing him for not having a dog license or vaccinating for rabies. Now police are taking the dog to West Valley Humane Society. We, we saw the video. It's extremely disturbing uh, to me, to my staff, to anyone that views this video, uh, including everyone in the community. And their, their, their concerns are valid. We hear them, we see them, we feel them. But we just have to uh, remain calm, let the investigators do their job, let the county prosecuting attorney do their job, work in partnership with them to bring justice. The owner has a court date coming up. He tells officers that he hit the dog in frustration over being late for work because the dog escaped the fence. Because of how publicized this is and the emotions it brings up, his name is not being shared. Boise Police School Resource Officers, they're training to keep your kids safe. They're conducting active shooter training with school resource officers, preparing for the worst case scenario. Sure, we recognize that school resource officers will probably be on scene if something like this happens, they'll be on scene by themselves for a short period of time until other people can help. And we recognize that that's a, a really daunting situation where they may have to make decisions and go and try to engage that shooter by themselves. Resource officers are using this facility you see to practice quickly making their way through halls and even breaching doors. He's going to call it out, give that verbal command, which is set. There you go. So he says set. I did. Set. The captain says school resource officers, they still want more training to make their reactions second nature in case the unthinkable ever happens. Well, switching gears, take a look at this. There's an investigation underway in Evansville, Indiana this morning after a sudden explosion. Four homes were destroyed. More than three dozen others were damaged. At least three people did die in the blast. Now, the ATF is investigating to figure out just what caused the blast. Turning to fire season here in Idaho, the Spring Creek boat launch out on the Salmon River now reopen as crews continue to try and contain the moose fire. Now, that fire is burning 17 miles north of the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's now nearly 75,000 acres, sitting at 21% containment. Crews, they now expect full containment around September 15th. Several trails are now closed in the area of the Indian Ridge Fire. Lightning sparked it near Idaho Selway Bitterroot Wilderness. That's about 30 miles southwest of Darby, Montana. It's burned 2,400 acres. Now, fire managers say they're trying to protect wilderness while also working to protect their crews. They say rugged terrain in the area is making it a hard fight. And it is a similar situation for the Wood Tick Fire. Crews, they say it's unsafe right now to fight that fire head on. It's nearly burned 5,500 acres, 27 miles west of the town of Chalice. Crews, they're working to protect several structures in the area this morning, including the Silver Creek Historic Cabins. July had some of the hottest nights in the history of the United States. Now, this July recorded an average temperature of 63.57 degrees in the lower 48 states. Now that's the warmest of any month since official record keeping of that data began back in 1880. Now this past July was also the third hottest July on record when daytime temperatures were also taken into account. Community matters here at CBS 2 and the 52nd bogus basin hill climb. It's this Saturday at 8 a.m. It's the third longest hill climb in our, the country. It starts at Highlands Village on Bogus Basin Road, ending at Pioneer Lodge. Now the climb expects to see close to about 150 cyclists this year. Event organizers hope to grow its popularity in the coming years. It's something that we have one foot in the past right now, but we also want to have one foot in the future and grow it and really make this a more community minded oriented event. We want just regular people who have looked at cyclists riding up and going, oh, I could never do that. We want to give them the opportunity to do that. 
This is just the second time the climb will reach all the way to Pioneer Lodge instead of Simplot Lodge. It's all thanks to new road paving. All right, Vasily, so we'll see you out there? No, <laughs> no, no, I cannot do that myself. I won't lie, but good luck to everyone that yes. actually does go out and do that. That's a very big accomplishment. Yeah, they're going to want to stay cool too. Even though it's 8 a.m., it's still going to be a little toasty, mm -hmm. a little even if there's a little bit of rain out there, even a little muggy in the mornings. Yeah. So what can people expect, at least as far as the weekend? Yeah, there's been a lot of humidity over the past few days, but this weekend's <laughs> looking relatively clear. High temperatures today, 96 degrees expected as the high over in Boise. In Salt Lake City, it's looking like 89 degrees today. And in Denver, they're going to hit 97 degrees as the high today. 97 down in Las Vegas. And over in Portland, they're looking at 87 degrees. But as I said, 96 degrees here in Boise. And those clouds, they're on their way out, which is very nice. We're going to see some more sunshine this week. Mid to high, 90 degree high temperatures throughout the week this week, as well as another dry weekend ahead. Futurecast showing us the cloud cover over the next few days and it's looking relatively clear Thursday morning but we may see some showers come over the Treasure Valley area Thursday afternoon and into Thursday evening but once Thursday evening is over we're looking relatively clear here in the Treasure Valley there may be some clouds over the Oregon Idaho border but in the Boise area looking very very clear and we're going to see that sunshine come out over the next few days heading into the weekend as well high temperatures for today 96 degrees expected in Boise 96 degrees expected in Emmett and Ontario as well. Caldwell will see 94 degrees as their high today and 95 degrees both in Nampa and in Mountain Home as well. Up in the mountains, 86 degrees expected in McCall and 91 degrees in Idaho City. We're looking at the high 90s throughout the five day forecast this week. I'll let you know about the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Looks great. Thank you, Vasily. It is 640 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. How's Good morning. Uh, I've got things kicking into gear just a little bit for our uh, pre-7 o'clock rush, we call it. Uh, not much of a rush, but a little crowding to watch out for. ID4, for example, as you come down the hill past Garrity, getting by the Garrity Merge at times, and a little bit Meridian, but no big delays. And away from the freeways in general, still doing quite well this morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Ron, well, thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Now it's time for our question of the day. That question is a quarter of Americans say there's no way they could keep this up if they started doing it. All right, what do we think it is? I'm still, Vasily, still sitting with that, that running mm -hmm. thought. Maybe, maybe it's just because we're tired, you know, it's, <laughs> it, we're kicking off our morning here, maybe a little bit of slow going. I just can't think about running this early in the morning. Yeah, it sounds tough. I like the running guess as well, but one of the uh, mm -hmm. viewer guesses eating healthy like I was maybe thinking like one of those tougher diets like a keto diet or oh something gosh. like that could be a good guess too but both are great guesses no it can be hard Marilyn is with us she also says running quite a mm -hmm. few guesses yeah. for that this morning okay maybe possibly it's looking like the popular answer might be the answer let's see Douglas says living on a budget that's a good one as well yes Douglas Gets it is hard live by my excel spreadsheets all right <laughs> <laughs> let's see what else Darren says participating in a Nathan's hot dog eating contest Test. I don't know if I could do that. That's a lot of dogs. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can eat that many. Oh my gosh. I, I, it'd be fun to try, but I don't want anyone to watch that. <laughs> All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, we still have 15 minutes to go. We'll read the answer coming up right before CBS this morning. Well, now I want a hot dog. All right. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning. Economists say they're a bit more optimistic. The positive signs that seem to point to inflation finally slowing down. CBS 2's Adventure Weather Local Forecast giving us an update on the forecast over in Weezer. Today will be mostly sunny with a high of 98 degrees. That'll drop to 71 degrees tonight and they'll drop one degree hotter, 99 degrees expected on Friday in Weezer. And over in Cascade, they're expecting a high of 86 degrees. That'll drop to 51 degrees tonight and then they'll drop four degrees tomorrow, 90 degrees expected tomorrow in Cascade. 
Thank you, Vasily. It is 646. Prices on just about everything, they're still high, but some economists say they're a bit more hopeful when it comes to inflation. Now, Amy Kiley reports on the new numbers behind that cautious optimism. It feels like, uh, you know, uh, we're going to get some better news here. Some economists are starting to sound hopeful about prices in the U.S. going down. Even though we got this cooling, ongoing pressures on food prices and gasoline prices, those could come back at any time. Make that cautiously hopeful. It's not going to be a straight line, I'm sure. There's going to be ups and downs and all arounds and there's going to be disappointments. But I do think we're going to feel a lot better about inflation, you know, a year from now. New data show the consumer price index didn't change between June and July. Gas prices continue dropping. A gallon of regular cost four sixty eight about a month ago. Now it's about four bucks. A vice president at Gas Buddy says that trend could continue, but it's hurricane season, so don't get too excited. If we see any major storm, uh, I would say a category three or stronger, targeting an area between New Orleans and Houston. Buckle up. The oil prices are really key. Uh, you know, it shows up mostly, most quickly with regard to gas prices, but it's going to show up in food prices. Economists say cheaper diesel means cheaper shipping and eventually cheaper food. But the U.S. isn't there yet. Food prices went up between June and July, and overall prices are still much higher than a year ago, leaving some Americans struggling to buy necessities. Our goal, and we think it is absolutely possible, is to lower prices and get to a point of more steady, stable growth. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Air travelers finally getting some relief from the cost of flying, but it's not much when compared to last year. Now, the government's consumer prices report, it says the average fare fell nearly 8% in July. That's to $311, still nearly 28% higher than just a year ago. Now, strong demand coupled with fewer flights helped spark the rise. Airlines, they also blame high fuel prices. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're working to make every student's school year a little bit brighter by supplying them with everything they need to learn. But we are running out of time. That drive ends tomorrow, so make sure to get your donations in. Now tomorrow, we'll be live at CapEd Credit Union. That's at North Marketplace Boulevard out in Nampa. Come say hi. We hope to fill a school bus to the brim full of supplies for local kids. Now all donations will be given to the Salvation Army and put into backpacks given back to kids in the Treasure Valley. Now right now, we need glue, spiral notebooks, colored pencils, red pens, and scissors. That's what the kiddos need right now. So if you'd love to give, we do have donations. You can drop them off at any CapEd Credit Union. You can also donate money. That's through a link on our website. Now it will be used to buy supplies that didn't get donated. You can find that link again. Just head on over to our website. Yeah, you don't really think about sometimes the little things. I didn't realize how much kids need scissors. I guess that's a mm -hmm. big one that's, that kind of gets left out a lot. So scissors, those red pens, of course, the glue for those craft projects, some of the fun things they do, lots of opportunities. And of course, tomorrow you can go out and do that. We're going to be stuffing mm -hmm. the bus, at least um, weather-wise. It's looking like it's going to yeah. be perfect, more sunshine. We also have a full moon tomorrow. So yeah. again, if you want to head out early, you may be guided by the moonlight right to Cap Ed Credit Union. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it's looking pretty nice how are, how are at least temperatures looking today as you're heading out the door. Temperatures today are looking fairly good. 96 degrees expected as the high here in Boise. We do have a chance of some afternoon thunderstorms here in the valley. We'll have a clear morning in Boise with a partly cloudy afternoon as well. But as I said, there is a chance of afternoon to evening thunderstorms here in Boise. Futurecast will show you when those will enter the area. Now we're going to have a clear morning, as I said, but those thunderstorms will enter the area around four to five o'clock here in Boise and should last for just about an hour or two. And then we should start seeing those clear skies once again here in Boise. And we're going to stay clear throughout the weekend as well. Friday afternoon, we may see some clouds over the Ontario area, but looking fairly clear here in the Treasure Valley going in to start this weekend. 96 in Boise, 96 in Emmett, and 96 in Ontario as well. 95 degrees expected in Mountain Home, and then up in the mountains, 86 degrees in McCall, and 91 degrees in Idaho City. For your extended forecast, we're going to see temperatures in the high 90 degree range throughout the week. Friday will be 98 degrees, and we'll see 90 
96 from Saturday to Monday as well. Tuesday will be 98 degrees and Wednesday will be 97 degrees and then heading over to the mountains. Today will be the only partly cloudy day, but we should see high 80 degree temperatures throughout the week. Thank you, Vasily. It is 651 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien for a look at what's happening out on the roadway. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking? Good morning. Traffic on I-84, not doing too bad. There's been pretty uh, minimal crowding at times, not uh, fully kicking in. Next hour will, will mean busier traffic. Little heads up, Highway 2026, the work really in full gear near Highway 16, east and west of Highway 16. As a matter of fact, they've put up hard cement barriers in that uh, stretch, so down to one lane for through traffic each direction, and they're utilizing what would normally be the eastbound side of the uh, highway there so a lot of work getting going for that highway 16 extension watch out there and expect delays later on at least from the news talk kboi traffic studio i'm ronald Bryan. no thank you ron important information for the morning so when you do get in the car you're going to want to turn your dial to 670 a.m or 93.1 fm for more team traffic updates Still to come on cbs2 news scary moments at a little league game leading to a lesson in sportsmanship the heartwarming story you don't want to miss. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 6.54. The Boise Hawks are getting ready for their final game in Missoula. Last night, the Hawks fell to the Paddleheads 14-2. That's the second loss for this series. They do have one more game there tonight. Then the Paddleheads, they follow the Hawks right here to the Treasure Valley for three more home games. Well, a scary moment during a Little League tournament in Waco, Texas on Tuesday turned out to be an inspiring display of sportsmanship. Now, it's a story that went viral earlier this week, and now CBS's Trinity Chavez shares the uplifting story. Oh, look out. This heart-stopping moment at a Little League baseball playoff game quickly turned into a heartwarming moment display of sportsmanship. My name is Caden Shelton, and they call me Bubs. It all started when a fastball from Texas East pitcher Caden Shelton hit the batter, Oklahoma's Isaiah Jarvis, in the side of the head. Gosh. Jarvis immediately oh dropped to the ground in pain, gripping his head. The crowd stunned. I was really scared that he was going to, like, be injured and go to the ER and stuff. But to the okay. relief of players Tensions and fans, he soon recovered. Then something remarkable happened. Jarvis marched over to Shelton, who was visibly upset, and embraced him with a hug, letting him know he was all right. So this is really cool because as a pitcher, Bubs looks shaken up right now. I was crying, and I, like, I could hardly breathe, honestly, at that point. And uh, he came over and he hugged me, and he told me I got this. The touching moment between opponents applauded in the ballpark and online. That's what Little League Baseball is all about. It's about the community and the friendships you can make. A friendship the two boys insist will last long after playing baseball. Trinity Chavez, CBS News, New York. Love that. Happy to know they're okay. Sportsmanship comes first. For real. It's a good message. All right, time for our question of the day. A quarter of Americans, they say there's no way they can keep this up if they started doing it. The answer? Keep a house plant alive. I'm, I know I can't do that. I don't have a green thumb at all. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, have a good day. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is...